favourite Gordon Ramsay quote? You fucking donkey. Of course. Yeah, why would it not be? <laughs> Such a good, just what an insult, you donkey. Oh, OK, Gordon, I'm sorry. You're going to blow fire in your face, you fucking donkey! Gordon Ramsay is a man for whom swearing is second nature, and despite the fact he's been criticised by everyone from his peers to actual members of the government about this fact, the only person he's known to listen to about curbing his swearing is naturally his own mother. So Americans might be familiar with the fact Gordon does swear quite a lot? Yes, but they might not know the true extent of how much Gordon Ramsay used to swear. Believe it or not, gentle viewer, Gordon Ramsay used to swear more than he does now. Young Ramsay was so bad that he was frequently in the news for breaking Ofcom records, for like, you know, for complaints by members of the public for the sheer amount of times he swore. For anyone who doesn't believe me that Gordon has like, you know, cleaned up his act a bit given that one of his most famous quotes is, as I mentioned earlier, you fucking donkey. Just consider like, you know, this clip from his very first television appearance, like, you know, in a feature starring role, Boiling point. Why don't you f off home then? Go on, f off home then. Hey, arsehole. Why don't you f off home then? I fing wake up, dickhead. Yes, good. I've seen plenty of shows he's in like Hell's Kitchen, yeah. Kitchen Nightmares, Hotel Nightmares, that sort of thing. Yes. But I've never seen Boiling Point. Yeah, well, Boiling Point for me is that that is true Ramsey. That is like Ramsey's, like, you know, hidden, true, secret form. And that's when he wasn't concerned about being a television personality, he was concerned about being a chef. And his language reflects that because so it's a very high stress environment where a lot of stuff goes wrong. And like there are reports saying, oh, he'd swear like 100 times an episode. Like the F word gets used more in one episode of Boiling Point than it does in like the Scarface movie. <laughs> and obviously, you can put in our clip of him later in years where he does swear, but it's in a more theatrical way. Dress me a fucking salad! Saute scallops in a non stick pan. They won't stick! That's why it's called fucking non-stick! I watched the, um, I think it was like the recent Hell's Kitchen and oh, it, they're all amazing. it made me laugh because I noticed like every time he'd complain about fish being raw, he would punch it. Yeah. He'd punch fish! <laughs> yeah, exactly, and that's obviously, that's something he does for the cameras because that looks really <laughs> good in episode promos. It's, oh, it's Gordon Ramsay elbow dropping salmon. <laughs> Has delivered undercooked salmon. Raw! I've never, I always wonder, like, why don't you just take it to the logical extreme and just put, do you like Rocky, where he's punching the meat? Yeah. Why isn't he just like, get whenever someone serves something really bad, just puts it on a hook and then puts on boxing gloves and beats the shit out of it? Well, what shocked me the most was, I think it was his daughter's birthday party. Oh, like, someone it, served raw food. Yeah, and he was swearing so much, I was like, his daughter is right there. Yeah, I thought, the thing is though, turn it, tone it down at least. That's that's true, Gordon. That's boiling point <laughs> Gordon coming out because he's obviously he's actually angry at that point instead of like you know, I mean, angry for the cameras. And I've asked because I've worked in kitchens and I've worked in restaurants and I've asked a chef what's like, how often have you sent something out raw? You know, what in my career or while I've worked here? And I went, let's just go for why you've worked here. And oh, never. What about during your career? Never. Why? Because <laughs> even when I was like you know a sous chef or a line chef that Edit Kitchener never let something go out raw because that's what his job is. Yeah. And it's just so baffling to me that on that show, someone's like, yeah, I've been, a, I've been a chef for like 20 fucking years. I cook these scallops and they're just raw all the time. <laughs> it's like, how can you not cook this? It's like a, a friend of mine who works in the kitchen is like a grill chef. He said, like, I've cooked like a thousand steaks. I can cook a steak blindfolded. I don't understand when I see people on the show and they can't cook meat. So it's one of the few, it's one of the literally the first things you learn when you get into a kitchen is how to cook meat properly. Yeah. It's one of the things, if you don't cook like vegetables properly, oh no, they're a bit tough, they're a bit crunchy, like, you know, the flavour's not quite there. You don't cook meat right, they're fucking dead. Have you ever seen though that picture online of the person trying to eat like medium rare chicken? Have you seen that? I th yeah, I think I have. That's actually. a famous one. And I don't know if that's a troll or not, and it worries me that it might not be. It's like he says, oh, I managed to eat a whole chicken raw. Or yeah, it's like, oh man, people just don't understand the beauty of medium raw chicken. Oh, oh no, medium rare chicken. Yeah. And it's just the cut and you see the bit of pink oh. in me. Like, oh no, don't do this. I always end up usually overcooking chicken because I'm so scared. Uh, yeah, of, like, getting some salmonella getting really disease. Ill. I do like though, um, Gordon Ramsay's on Twitter, where people say, oh Gordon, what do you think of my dinner? Yeah. And he just says, looks like shit, mate. Yeah, I've seen that. <laughs> like someone, I think someone sent him, oh, what do you think of my breakfast, or what do you think of my lunch, Gordon? And he just sent back, looks like when you clean out a dishwasher. And it's like, oh! 
And that makes me think he writes his own insults. Obviously, he runs his own Twitter. Yeah. Like, I think it's shared between him and a publicist. And obviously, those tweets are from him, and that's great. Have you ever seen the one from a girl, though? It's like, oh, Gordon, what do you think of my lasagna? And he just tweets back, looks all right. And she, like, framed the tweet Aww. and put it on a wall. It's like, yeah. Gordon Ramsay yeah. liked my lasagna. The thing that always confused me with Kitchen Nightmares is they actually, you know, want Gordon's yeah, help. Yeah, they call him up and ask him for help. But then when he gets there, they're like, there's nothing wrong with my food. The best one I've ever seen is, like, Oh, I forget which episode it was, but some like chef, it was chef in a restaurant. He's like shitting on him, going, "Oh yeah." So how do you know your food's better than mine? He goes, "Well, when I look, when I call up my restaurant and see he's booked for six months, that's usually a good sign." <laughs> so bringing it back to young Gordon. Yes, true Gordon. Do we have any numbers on how much he actually swore? Yeah, of course we do, because that's obviously something someone somewhere counted. And there was a famous example from 2009 where it was a one-off special called like Gordon's Great British Nightmare. So it's like a, I think it's like an hour and a half long special. And during that hour and a half long special, there were 243 instances of swearing. Um, I think like 180 of which were directly contributed to Gordon himself, who swore at one point every 20 seconds in one scene. So every 20 seconds he's dropping an F-bomb. And as an idea of just like how deeply ingrained swearing is in Gordon's vocabulary, he was asked about this, I think in 2010, by The Guardian, said, oh, so Gordon, the swearing, and he's, he, he's, I kid you not, his response was, oh, fuck. <laughs> Straight away, <laughs> instantly, no hesitation, fuck, as soon as he's asked about swearing. Seeing as he does swear so much and uses the F-bomb a lot, I assume he has a lot of criticism. Yes, like, in the industry and outside of it, and even from fans of his works. So obviously, when Gordon first came onto the scene, like I said, he was just a, like, a chef. He wasn't a television personality yet, and his shows were consistently some of the most complained about. Um, on TV, and um, he received like you know criticism from other chefs. I think like Jamie Oliver criticised him. I think Delia Smith criticised him. Like the British government, like a member of Parliament, once criticised him for swearing so much. Like he was a negative influence on our children. And every couple of years, he has an interview where he goes, "Yeah, I'm trying to cut down on my swearing." And then smash cut to another special or super cut of him saying fuck 45 times in one episode. <laughs> and as I mentioned earlier, one of the reasons for this is because he tried to like, you know, make it in America, which he has, been very successful over there. And he was told like Americans, they don't swear as much. Like British people, we, we swear casually and it's more tolerated. In America, the F-bomb causes people like drop spoons, which I find quite funny because British people are stereotyped as being quite prudish and we don't give a fuck. Like we'll swear casually and have like tits in TV shows. Like, the Carry On movies show in like the middle of the day over here and they've got women's bras just flying off and slapping people in the face. And in that vein, should we just talk for a minute about some of the stuff that's been on British TV? Our lovely American viewers probably won't understand or believe got made. Just think about it for a second. Like we have had some really, really bad TV. Like America has bad reality TV. We have just reality TV that is baffling. Like my favourite being Sex Box. Sex Box was literally a TV show where people, like, you know, they talked on stage to a sex therapist and then they went into a soundproof root box on a stage in a TV studio, had sex, came out, and then talked to the sex therapist again about the sex they just had. This is a real show that was on British TV and I was always annoyed they never called it Pork and Talk. Because that is, such a, that is a much better title. So is there anything in that vein you can't believe made it onto British TV that would not fly anywhere else? Well, have you seen Naked Attraction? Yeah, that show's so good. That show's amazing. I remember a friend of mine came over from America. I showed them that show. Again, like we probably can't put clips in of this one. This is literally, they just get people naked and they put, what is it like? They get like a, a blind and raise it up so like yeah. you see the knees and you see, a, you see a big flaccid knob. And then they ask the person to judge whether they date this person based on it. It's like, what do you think of this person's vagina? But it's literally like, we're not making this up. Yeah. So I, was, I was gonna say embarrassing bodies. Which is again the same thing, people, oh yeah, oh yeah, Dot's Christian, I've got a, a problem with my bell end. Boom, just flaps it out, like national TV, like, after the watershed, of course. Bringing it back to Gordon once again, obviously yeah. he gets criticised a lot, but I'm sure he's one who doesn't, you know, acknowledge it, he just yeah, he, tells like, them to fuck off, basically. He, that is usually his response, people telling him he swears too much, it's just a straight, fuck off. And as I said, he makes, like, token attempts to like curb his swearing. And my personal theory is that it was a good way for him to get like, you know, positive press when he was trying to like, you know, launch his career in America. Because he just did a series of interviews where he said he was gonna try and stop swearing, which obviously lets him write the headline, 
TV chef famous for swearing vows to stop swearing and obviously he didn't. There is one person known to be able to keep Gordon in check and that is his own mother. And uh, in his autobiography, um, he recounts the first time he saw himself on TV when he was watching back an episode of Boiling Point. And he says that that's the first time I realized how much I swear. But I didn't realize like how, and as well, how aggressive he was and how like, you know, he came off to others. And then he said, well, I don't give a shit. <laughs> so he acknowledged that obviously he was a terrifying, scary asshole that swore all the time, but he didn't mind. But his mum was, and I quote, appalled. And obviously no one wants to disappoint the mother, do they? Even Gordon Ramsay doesn't want to disappoint his own mother. So Gordon's mum yeah. clearly hasn't stopped him com from completely swearing, because no. he still does it. Yeah, and because it's part of his image and his brand now, isn't it? Like, people know, he's known for it. And if he stops completely, like, part of his draw will be gone. But his mother is known to be the one person who can, if she wants to, curb how much he swears. And a great example of this is in 2017 when Gordon was supposed to make his first ever daytime TV appearance. And obviously he was shitting bricks. He's like, oh my God, no. What am I gonna do? I can't appear on daytime TV. I'm gonna get kicked off immediately. I feel like the bleep guy who works the bleep machine is gonna have a heart attack. Like, come on. And his mother called him up and said, Gordon, just here to remind you that I'll be watching and all my friends will be watching. I hope you don't disappoint me. And he went on the show and didn't swear once. That's adorable. Right, since it's been touched upon briefly in this video, let's discuss disappointing our parents because as people I might imagine, uh, my job of making dumb videos on the internet isn't exactly something my parents were enthused about when I first did it. And before that, when I was a, a writer who wrote dumb articles for the internet, they also were not enthused. And I think my dad still doesn't understand I, how it works. He's just like, well done, son. I'm, gl I'm glad you're earning money. I'm glad you're happy. <laughs> for so many years, he wanted me to become a teacher. Because fun fact, that's what I was originally going to university to be until I stumbled ass backwards into writing. I went, oh man, sitting on your ass and just writing funny articles for like $10 a pop is way better than going to like university for another two years. And he still occasionally, every time I sing a son, it's never too late to go back to uni, become a teacher. And I'm like, dad, I'm all right. And like, no, it's, you know, son, it's always an option for you. It's always there. And I get the feeling like there's like, there's like twang of disappointment that I'm not a teacher, that I've not got a respectable profession. <laughs> My mum's the same, really. I mean, she's pretty chill when it comes to that sort of thing. Like, I don't think there's anything she wanted me to do. She's not like vocalized it anyway, yeah. but I think she was, she was proud of me because I went to uni and I was like the first in the family to go to uni. But like, whenever I talk to her about what sort of job I do, I think it just goes straight yeah. over her head. And she's just like, yeah, good. Sounds good. good. Very proud. I, I, you, reminds me a lot of when I was a kid. Like, you know, when my dad would walk past my room and I'm playing video games. Yeah. And you know, the dad, your dad always that thing where he looks at him and goes, you winning, son? Yeah, dad. All right, then. And that's it. That's all it is. He doesn't understand what he wants to show willing, but he doesn't know how to. <laughs> that has hit a lot of people right in the fields when I said that, because that is universal amongst parents, like walking past the room, like, the, like just walking past the room with a cup of tea like, after they've been at work or on nights, something like that. You winning, son? Yeah. All right, bye, Dad.